Let's praise our great mighty God tonight. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. We thank you for this day.
God is great, isn't he? Yes, oh, man, what a blessing to know the God of God, the Amen. King of kings, the Lord of lords, yes. the mighty of the mightiest. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, let's just love on one another tonight. watch your fireworks or whatever it is you're going to do and have a safe holiday. There will be Sunday morning service at the regular time. So don't forget about that one now. Come on out. It won't be the same if you're not here. <laughs> oh, well, praise the Lord. All right, what time is it? Seed, time, and harvest. So if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand, and our usher it will get one to you quickly and expediently as she can. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read out of uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 2, and then we'll see where we go from there. It says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. In other words, set it aside. As God has prospered him, that there be, may be no gatherings when I come. Now Paul's talking about it, your tithes, your offerings, your love gifts. He was coming and he was going to get their bounty and he was going to take it to Jerusalem. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, but he told them, he says, on the first day of the week, in other words, when do you get your, the first day of the week for us could be our payday. Yeah. All right, so that, that's what we're talking about. When you got the maximum right here, theirs was the first day of the week. Lay it aside. Yeah. Set your tithes aside, set your offerings aside that you need to bring to the Lord and yeah. worship Him with that. Yeah. Okay? 
But there's other principles here of, in addition to the tithe and the offering that he's telling them to set aside. That's one principle of prosperity. There's another principle for your other provisions, other things you need. Amen. Yes, the Bible does say God shall supply all our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But God does require us to do some things. Yeah. And, when, and, and whatever he directs us to do, whatever we see in the word to do, we must mix faith with it yeah. or it will not benefit us. And if you know down the future, say six months from now, a year from now, we'll just use this example, tires. You got a new car. Maybe you got an old car. Maybe you just bought tires. You know if you keep that car in a few years from now, you're going to need tires. Amen. Right? Yeah. What does Jehovah Jireh do? He looks ahead and makes provision. You could basically say he sets aside some in savings or sets aside provision for that need out in the future. Failure to do that will open the door to the enemy. I've been victim to that in the past. But we are improving with time and knowledge and, and the grace of the Lord, right? So, so in addition to setting aside your tithes and your offerings every week as you bring them and when you get paid to bring them to the Lord and mix your faith with sowing that, that the Lord will increase you. As he sees you're a good steward of what he's given you, say, say, say you need tires now. Well, maybe six months from now you need tires, but you don't have the money. Yeah. Two things you can do. You can sit down. You can see how much can I set aside for that. I'm going to be here at this point doing what I can do in my own strength. Right. But as God sees you're doing that, you trust him and believe him to make up the difference. Right. So you'll have the full provision at the time of the need. Yes. Okay? So as you, the point is this. As you're a good steward with what you have, and God sees you're handling it wisely and sees how you're handling it and making provision, following his example as Jehovah Jireh, making provision for needs of the future. And he sees that he will bless you and increase you. Yeah. But don't fail to bring your tithes and offerings and worship him with that. Yeah. Because if you fail to do that, well, then he, you, just, you just tied his hands. You basically locked him up in jail and forbid him to bless you. I'm serious. Yeah, I'm serious. I forgot to pay my tithe one time. And I wondered what was going on. Because things started going wrong. And this was, I was single when this happened. And I wondered what was going on. Like, hey, God, what's up? And the Lord was so gracious to me. He told me, you forgot to pay your tithe. And the door is open. So I shut that door. Boy, I paid my tithe and I gave more. Because I wanted to be sure that I was covered. <laughs> had my back. You know? <laughs> he's got my back. He's got your back. He's also got your front, but you got to listen to him. I got to listen to him. Failure to do so will cost us. But if we listen, he will provide. Provision will be there when we need it. And the door won't be open and we won't be lacking. And God will bless us with more than what we need so we can be a blessing and have some to sow on top of it. Amen. Everybody got an envelope that needs one. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for being so gracious to us. We thank you for your love and your kindness. And Lord, we thank you tonight as we bring our tithes, our offerings, our love gifts to you, to worship you with them. Any need we have as we keep you first in this area, in all areas of our life, we know that you're adding your blessing to it. And it is multiplying and you are increasing it so that all our needs are met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that the tithes and offerings are blessed and your blessing is upon us, your people. And you pronounce blessing on us and you can't curse whom God has blessed. And so, Lord, we thank you that you're our defense, you're our prosperity, and you're our rear guard. So we can't lose for winning and we bless you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. And if you could bring your offering up, please.
it would make it much easier for our usher. And thank you. Thank you. Into the darkness you 
good. He's always good because he's always on the throne. He always has your back. He's always looking out for you. Amen. He's got your best interest at heart all the time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. Woo. Praise the Lord.
<laughs> you're all like, oh. <laughs> like, woo! <laughs> Almost like a, being on a racetrack, you know? <laughs> but like ready to just take on off. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Say, I get to live. The good life. The God predestined. Planned beforehand for me. Point to yourself and say, for me. For me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Turn with me to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're just going to do a quick review because I did this. I, I just want to review what I did a couple weeks ago for some of those that may not have been here and just to refresh your memory and then we're gonna just move on to something new. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. He says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose what? Life. Choose life. Yeah that both thou and thy seed may live. Glory to God. We have a choice to make. God makes it plain and simple. He says, this is what you need to choose. He says, I've given you choices right here. They're either black and white, dark or light, death or life. What does he say? Choose life. He gives us the answer. It's like, you know, multiple choice, but there's only two choices. There's no in-between, right? Amen. So Jesus is saying, he says, choose life. Amen? Yeah. And go with me to Matthew chapter 7. So we want to choose the right life. Amen. Say, I will. I will. I will choose the right life. I'll choose the right path. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 7. Oh, my hands are like, blah, 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 blah. I can hardly turn the pages. Ooh, chapter 7, verse 13. He says, Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in there. Verse 14, he says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. Now, I define that word narrow, and that word narrow in that verse means to afflict, to throng, to suffer tribulation, okay? Jesus is saying you need to take the path of him. You're going to go through, go through some things. But what did he say in John 16, 33? You want to go there? John 16, uh, 16, 33. Let's go there. So why would I want to choose the path that's got, it's narrow, but it's God's path. Right? If it's God's path, guess what? That means he's on it. That means he's going to show us the way. That means there's hope. That means he's going to lead you and guide you and protect you and keep you and minister to you and counsel you and, and be there for you. Amen? Glory to God. In John 16, 23, uh, I'm sorry, 33, it says, These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. He says, in the world, you shall have tribulation. He didn't say you might. He said, you shall. He said, you shall have tribulation. But what does he say? He says, be of good cheer. He says, I have overcome the world. Amen? So it doesn't matter if we're going through something right now. What did Jesus say? He says, be of good cheer, right? I'm on that path. I'm with you. I've overcome this. Amen? But you know what? There's always 
the answer. That's right. God is with you. Yeah. God is who we look to. God is the one who's on the throne. Amen? He's our direction. He's the one that we look to. If we acknowledge him in all of our ways, he'll direct our path. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so he's preordained us for a good life. Amen? Go to Ephesians chapter 2. So not only is he on this path, but it's a good path. And he's preordained it for us. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified. And it says, For you are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that you may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time. That we should walk in them, living the good life. Say, living the good life. Which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. God prearranged and he made your whole life ready for you to live. When you became born again, you got onto that path. And God said, now you got a good life. You got a hope and a future. And it's a preordained future. It's a predestined future. It's a good life. Amen. You've been recreated in Christ, made brand new. You, nobody ever existed who's like you. You're the handiwork of God, a masterpiece in the master's hand. Glory to God. You've got the signature of God on you. Your personality, your looks, your fingerprints are the handwork of God. It's the signature of God on you. Amen. Well, I just... Some people just don't like my personality. Well, you know what? Everybody's got a different personality. God made us all different. And you know what? All of us together make up him. He, we are an expression of God. Like an artist, when he creates a painting or a sculpture, it's an expression of that artist. And we're an expression of God. He's put a stamp on us. Amen? Your handprints are unique. Not one of them is the same. Amen. Glory to God. You're unique in his sight. Amen. So what if somebody dresses a little different? I dress different. Who cares? I think we all should dress different. What would we look like? We'd all look like a bunch of robots walking around. It'd be a boring world if we all dress the same. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Now that word create, I looked that up in the Greek that word create, and I like this, and you probably want to write this down if you didn't get it. Create means to fabricate. Means to fabricate. Okay? But when you go on to define fabricate, you think about a TV show when, you know, somebody plotted and, and uh, they came up with some kind of scheme to, to uh, confuse somebody. They fabricated a story because they wanted to cause confusion so they couldn't find the real answer. And uh, it was like the Holy Ghost just quickened this to me when, when I saw that word fabricate. And it was like, the, the word fabricate means to concoct in order to deceive. And it's like the Holy Ghost just quickened it to me. And God wanted to totally confuse the enemy. When he recreated us in Christ Jesus, the devil did not know what to do. Because he saw you one way and you came out another. You used to be the old man and now you're the new. And the devil doesn't know what to do about it. He's all confused. He's like, I don't get it. There, what happened to that old Missy Zupa Reed? What happened to her? Where'd she go? I can't find her now, right? What happened to that old Pastor Steve Nicholson? What happened to him? I can't find him. Well, we're recreated. God fabricated us, recreated us so that the devil would be all confused about it, right? We're recreated in Christ Jesus. His righteousness became our righteousness. We gave him our filthy rags and we got what he had. What a trade-off. What a trade-off. Amen. We got the better end of the deal. So we, we are hidden in Christ in God. Amen? The devil is looking around. He's trying to find people, but he can't find us. We're in God. Amen. We'll stay in him. He can't see us. 
us. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And God wants us to live the abundant life too. Amen. John 10.10. 10, go there. John 10.10. 10. So he not only created us and wants us to have a wonderful life, but he wants it to be an abundant life. Yes. It's an abundant life. Not to just to have life. Not just to, you know, I got born again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to heaven. But God wants us to have an abundant life. Amen. Filled with the joy and the peace of God. You know, everything that you could even think of, God wants us to have. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He wants our family saved. Yeah. He wants our children living yeah. for God. Yeah. He wants our parents living for God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He wants divine protection upon you yeah. and your family. Yeah. Over here, John 10.10, 10, I'm going to read it out of the King James. It says, The thief cometh not, but for to uh, steal, kill, and to destroy. He said, I am come that they may, might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And that word abundantly means an advantage. It means exceedingly, very highly, and beyond measure. So God wants your life to be exceedingly above what you can even ask or think. Amen. Amen. He wants us to enjoy life. He doesn't want us to just go from day to day, just to go on. I'm living my life, just living a life. I'm going to work, just living my life. No, he wants us to have him. He wants us to enjoy him. We're, when we got the Holy Ghost, come on, we got God in us. Yes. When we're on our way to work, you may not totally enjoy your job, but thank God you got one. Yes. You know, don't be grumbling about having a job. Just be thankful you got one. And if you want to get a new one, then look for one. But in the meantime, be thankful you got one. And on the way to work, you can be praying in the Spirit. You can enjoy the presence of God on your way to work. You can be praying in the Holy Ghost. You can be praising God. You can be praying when you're sitting at your desk. You can be praying when you're behind the counter. I used to do that when I worked at Albertsons. I'd be, I pray soft. You know, I wasn't like, didn't get on the intercom, okay? Hey, everybody. And I'd be like, what? No, don't do that, but... You can pray in the Holy Ghost. You can lay hands on people and pray for them, right? Make the most of where we're at. Yeah. Don't be bummed out because of <laughs> No, be happy. Yeah. Be happy wherever you're at, right? Yeah. Glory to God. I, I, I cleaned three houses yesterday, so I could be off tomorrow and Friday. Right. And, uh... Toward the end, I was like, oh, you know, but I, I, I was able, because nobody was even there, I was able to play Shambach. I'm like, I'm going to listen to some, I'm going to listen to me some preaching, you know? I'm going to pump myself up because I can with the word instead of sitting here in this empty house cleaning the inside of the cabinets that aren't even really dirty, you know? Praise the Lord. <laughs> I listen to me some kicking down one. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. But God wants us to have this abundant life. Amen. Amen. But we got to stand our ground. Oh, Say, I'm going to stand my ground. Amen. Glory to God. Go with me to 1 Peter 5, 8. And I was listening to something the other day. You know, you can hear a scripture over and over and over again. And, and you're thinking, I've heard this scripture. And you know what? I heard this scripture the other day. I was listening to, I think it was Keith Moore teaching. And uh, just all of a sudden, just boom, something went off in me. And I wanted to look up a certain word that was in that scripture. And I got completely different revelation on it. I was like, praise the Lord. You know, one word. A one word from God. Amen. Amen. First Peter 5 eight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We should be excited. Yeah. We hear, hear the word. Amen. Yeah. We got to stand our ground. And God wants us to live the abundant life. 
But you know what? In order for us to do that, you know, we've got to keep the door closed to the enemy. Amen. He wants us to be living a good life. And he's given all these things. He says, you know, uh, how, in Romans uh, 8.32, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things, right? And in uh, Peter, it says how he's given all things unto us concerning life and godliness. Amen. He's given us all these things. But we got it. we've got a part to play in it, okay? And over here... In 1 Peter 5.8, and I'm going to point out two things, but I'm going to read this scripture first. 1 Peter 5.8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, he tells you who your adversary is. Okay? That there's the, the, right there is an answer. Your adversary, your enemy, your opponent, the devil, as a roaring lion... Walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Okay? Go back to John 10.10. 10. i got to point something out to you. Okay? <clears throat> it says, The thief cometh not but to, for to steal, kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, gee, now, and the Holy Ghost pointed this out to me about that they might have life. He didn't say they shall have life and they shall have it more abundantly. Okay? He said that they might. Okay? Now, think about this. Might. Okay? The word might means a probability. Okay? It's probable that they might have life. And that they might have it in abundance. It's probable. If you look that up and study it out, that's what it means. It's probable. The, the, the possibility is there. Okay? We have a part to play in it. Because he's telling us that the devil comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And over here in 1 Peter 5 eight, he says, your opponent, your adversary, the one who hates you the most, is walking about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. Now that word may, okay, that word may, that's the word that stuck out to me. That word may means to give permission to. Who is giving the enemy permission to come into their life? Okay? Who is giving him permit? You're, what are we allowing into our life? Okay? He said, seeking whom he may devour. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. Seeking whom he may devour. It says, be sober, be vigilant. Oh, that's King James. <laughs> Amplify, please no change. <laughs> okay, it says be well balanced, be temperate of a sober sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious at all times. He says, for that enemy of yours, not your next door neighbor, but the enemy that is yours, okay? We all have an enemy. And it's not, you know, our our employer. It's not the people that we work with, but it's the devil, Amen. okay? He says, that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Withstand him and be firm in the faith against the onset, rooted and established, strong and movable, and be determined, knowing, now listen to this, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians, okay, throughout the whole world. Yeah. The devil hates the church. Yeah. He hates anybody who's born again, and especially the ones that are filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues, and the ones that got the revelation of the knowledge of God and are hungry and thirsty to give it out to other people. Amen. He's going to come in and he's going to try to trip us up no matter how we can. He's going to look for a weak area in our life. Where are we weak at? He's not 
you when you're strong. He's not going to, you know, I always, somebody was on TV the other day. He's not going to tempt you with something that you can't be tempted with. Okay? You know, I work in, in, I work in several homes, and I tell you what, they got a lot of expensive things in there, and I got the key or how to get into all of those houses. Okay? They trust me with their goods. You know what? I have not one time taken anything from any of those homes. In fact, I, I picked up a quarter one time that was on the floor because I didn't want to suck it up in my vacuum cleaner, and I stuck it in my pocket, and then when I got home, I went, oh my gosh, I got a quarter of it from Lynn's house. I was like, oh. And I set it on my dresser. I brought it back like two weeks later. I'm like, oh my gosh, Lynn. I'm like, I was so sorry. I picked this up because I didn't want to suck it up in the vacuum cleaner. And I'm so sorry. I took it home. And she looked at me. She goes, are you kidding me? She goes, you could have kept it. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm not tempted to steal. That wasn't a weak area of my life. Okay? But with some, it could be. Some people shouldn't be cleaning other people's houses because they got way too much temptation around them. If, if you know, you don't go to places where you were tempted before, okay? And that's never been an area where I've been tempted. I know when I worked at Albertsons, I was no, you know, I had my own department, and uh, I tell you what, when when my inventory was bad. And uh, I knew, I'm like, something's wrong. Because you know the first thing they do, you got bad inventory, guess who they're blaming? Yeah. The one who orders. Yeah. Oh, you ordered too much, you probably threw it all in the trash. No, I'm like, uh-uh, no. And I would pray, and guess what? Every single time something like that would happen, somebody would get caught stealing. Yeah. And they'd catch them. And the person, you know, I, the, the clues would be there. Oh, is so-and-so gonna be in tonight? Uh, and, and I would start saying, no, he's not coming in tonight, you know, but the clues would be there and they get caught, right. you know, yeah. but the devil's going to tempt people in an area that they're weak in. Yeah. And so that's why he's saying, you know, be sober, be vigilant, yeah. you know, keep on the lookout, be on the watch, yeah. you know, don't, don't, you know, be lackadaisical in your spiritual walk with God. You know, don't, you know, just, you know, uh, you know, fall asleep on God. This isn't the time for us to be, you know, snoozing. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. So we got to keep that door closed. Amen. You don't want to get permission for the enemy to come into your life. Amen. Neither do I'm talking to me too. This message is for me. You know, this is something that just, you know, we don't just like pop into, the, uh, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress because you know what? There's different levels that each one of us are at spiritually. And I know when I started off when I was a baby, when I first got born again, there was things that the Lord would let me do. And it didn't bother me spiritually. I was just like, woohoo, hey, you know, and I, I just had fun, you know, it was like, but, but then as I began to grow spiritually, the, the Lord began to trim some things. Yeah. Okay, now you, you know, you shouldn't be doing that, you know, kind of get rid of this and, you know, and trim and make your, you know, and cause you to be more like him, yeah. right? To be more like the image of Christ. You know, when you pray that prayer, I want all of you and none of me, you got to be willing to uh, let the, uh, either the, the, what are those big, those the shears come in, or the or the chainsaw might come in. You might, you know, <laughs> you know I mean, you gotta you gotta let God do it. I used I remember uh, I used to smoke cigarettes. Everybody laughs when I tell them that you did. Oh my God! I'm like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, I drank beer too. <laughs> and now I talk about it. I laugh. You know, I'm like, I did. Yeah. But you know what? Little bit by bit, the Lord trimmed these things off. Yeah. They didn't just like fall off of me like, you know, ripe apples falling off a tree. Yeah. It was a work in progress. And I remember I, I was like, I wasn't tithing, but I was still, you know, I was still smoking my cigarette. <laughs> and I finally was like, my heart was like, Lord, I really, I said, I really, I really want to give more. I really want to do the word. I got this this habit I need your help with. Yeah. Because honestly, when I came to the Lord, tithing wasn't in my budget. Okay? I mean, my, my this these were my bills and that was it. I mean, I paid my bills and I might have $5 left over at the end of the month. I didn't have anything. 
But you know what? I never forgot the very first time I got hands laid on me. I went down like a sack of potatoes. And you know what? Thank God I got delivered from smoking cigarettes. Boom! Just like that. I was like, yeah! But God, how many, how many of you know if, if you ain't where you're where you really want to be spiritually, God will come in. If your heart is really hungry for it, if you're really crying out for it, God will make up the difference. Amen. You might go two feet and he'll go two thousand feet. Just, he said, she's making a step toward me. Woo! Just like a baby that's learning to, to walk, you know, they're like. You know, and, and, and you're like watching them and they're like, ah! you know, and, and then you're like, okay, they're going to fall on their face. And so then you run and you make up the difference, right? That's what God does with us. We're, we're like, ah! we're going to fall on our face. God, no, <laughs> get you now. Not going to let you fall. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we got to make sure we're keeping the door closed to the enemy. Amen. Go to first John two. 1 John 2. So there's, you know, I got a hold of this book. I read this book over and over and over again. It was Pastor Sherry told me, you just need to read the word and read it over and over and over again and pick a book that really ministers to you. I said, okay. So I picked 1 John. And I read it. It was five chapters. And it, well, it wasn't five chapters. It is five chapters. <laughs> it hasn't changed. I didn't add another chapter to it. <laughs> like, used to be five. I don't know what happened. I lost a page. <laughs> oh, goodness. I need a tissue. Where are you? Lights. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 2.15. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen? Amen. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. 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 I started to get a hold of some of these scriptures. And, uh, you know, I started changing a lot of the things that I was doing, you know, before I got saved. Yes. You know, it's like you get saved and you want to grow. You got to... You got to do some different things. Some different things got to come in you for different things to come out. Amen. <laughs> James 127, the last part of that verse says, keep himself, keep or keep yourself unspotted from the world. We got to look different. Amen. We got to act different. Yes. We got to show that Christ is in us. Show the world who's living on the inside. We don't need to be haughty. We don't need to be prideful. But I can remember when I got born again and uh, one girl asked me, she would get so stressed out at Albertson. She worked in the office and she was like, she would be in tears every day. And she knew me before Christ. And then she knew me after Christ. <laughs> and she said to me one day, she's like, what happened to you? <laughs> she said, you're always just happy. You don't worry about anything. You don't let, you know, company get on to you and this and that. And I said, I got born again. Amen. I said, I got Jesus on the inside of me. Amen. She goes, really? I said, yeah, you want to? And she goes, yes. And she got quiet for a minute. Hey, God. And you know what? That after that, she was like, I don't care about a thing. You know, she... <laughs> She was funny. She's like, I don't care about They can say what they want, but I'm going to stay in the peace. She was funny. It was like, wow, that was quick. 
God came in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So uh, let's go to Mark 4.24. Mark 4.24. So there's a few things we got to do. We got to take heed to what we're listening to. What are we letting go in and out of our ears? You know, are we feeding on all the news? Are we feeding on, you know, the doom and gloom? Are we feeding on, you know, evil reports in the newspapers? Bad music, you know? I mean, we can listen to, you know, ungodly music all the time, and if we're listening to it, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours a day, that's what's pumping in us. That's what's going in our eardrum. And you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, right? So Jesus says over here in Mark 4, 24, he said unto them, be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you, yeah. right? And more besides will be given to you who hear. So he's saying the more you hear stuff, the more you're going to basically believe it. Amen. So what do we want to put our ears on? We want, you know, I can remember I changed the music that I was listening to. I was listening to country music. You know, good old Tim McGraw and Faith Hill and all, yeah. I still like them, but you know, I don't feed on them all the time. Once in a while, I like some of the songs that they sing, because honestly, I would rather hear a good country song than a bad, unbelieving Christian song. And I'll change the channel on my radio if I hear, I'm not worthy to be in your presence, you know, and something like that. I don't know why you call me your own, you know. I mean, you hear stuff like that, and you're like, golly, I'd rather listen to something like that. I'd rather, you know, come on, country music, do something. But then sometimes, usually, you know, I, it was you, we got a new car, and now we have Bluetooth, okay? And I don't know, I was pushing the buttons on my radio when I didn't know what I was doing. And then all of a sudden, Keith Moore started singing to me. I go, oh, oh I look at my phone, and here's the music's coming out of my phone through the speakers at the car. I'm like, all right, I can listen. <laughs> I'm like, technology's taken on so far. Amen. Glory to God. Proverbs 4.20, he says, my son, attend to my words. He says, give attention to my words, right? Yeah. So we want to give attention to the things of God. Give attention to God's word. Listen to messages. Let, you know, turn on some good Christian music. Listen to some good preaching. Listen to some good faith messages, right? Yeah. Turn on Joel Osteen or turn on, you know, Kenneth Copeland or whoever feeds your faith. T.D. Jakes will get you stirred up. Yeah. You know, any of them. I was listening to Shambach yesterday and even today. You know, we just... We can just put God's word in us, right? Yeah. So what goes in us is what's going to come out of us, yeah. right? Yeah. And number two, we got to keep our eyes on the right thing. Amen. Go to Matthew 18:9. Matthew 18, 9. Matthew 18, 9, and it says, If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes, to be cast into hellfire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, Jesus wasn't literally saying, go cut your eyeball out. Okay? <laughs> he wasn't saying, take a knife to your eye and perform surgery. And everybody go around like this. That's not what he was saying. He's saying if your eye is, listen, that word offend. Now, I look this up. I always look up words, okay? So I know you, um, this word offend in this uh, particular verse means to cause you to stumble or sin. Entice you to sin, okay? So with what we're looking on is going to cause us to do something that's ungodly, that wouldn't be pleasing to the Lord, what's he saying? He's saying, don't look at that. 
He's not saying, you know, just pluck your eyeballs out. Now you can't look anymore. Yeah, that's that ain't going to solve anything because you still got a mind that needs to be one renewed, right? <laughs> that, you know, pulling your eyeballs out and putting patches on your eyes so you can't see anything. I'm not going to look at anything now. God said I should just put my eyeball out. No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying if your eye is causing you, what you're looking at is causing you to go back to the old man and resurrect the way he used to be, okay? And, and uh, he's saying, don't let it do that. He said, put a stop to it. Don't look on those things, okay? What kind of movies are we watching? What kind of magazines are we looking at, right? If Jesus came into your household right now, would you have to do a hunt and search and put tuck and, and bleed? Oh, don't do that. Let it under the couch. Oh, I hope he doesn't sit there. I better hide this. No, or let put this video away. No. No, Jesus should be in our house all the time. Right. Doing an eyeball search, right? Right? If he did, if he looked at your cookies on your computer, where have you been? <laughs> I can delete those cookies. Well, delete them and don't look at them again. Okay? <laughs> you know, we don't have any of that stuff in our house. You know, we got Word of Faith magazines everywhere. I'm like, we got so many of them. I got them in this basket. I got them in that basket. You go to our throne room and there's a basket. You could sit in there for like three days and read Word of Faith magazine. <laughs> You'd be like, well, I'm gonna put, it, put it in front of my eyes now. <laughs> Amen. So what we look on and what we hear is going to be what's coming out of our mouth, right? What we feed on, what we look at, what we listen to, it, because it says because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks, right? So Jesus is saying we got to watch what's coming out of our mouth, right? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Where did I have that? Because I skipped over all this. Here it is. Praise the Lord. Psalm 34, 13. It says, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Proverbs 18, 20. Let's go there. Proverbs 18, 20. Proverbs 18, 20. And it says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So death and life, remember back at the beginning, I have set before you this day a choice for us to make, right? Life and death, blessing and cursing, right? And so he's saying here, death and life are in the power of the tongue. We have the ability to keep the door closed to the enemy, Amen. right? Yep. And all we've got to do is, is what we're looking at, what we're listening to, you know, keep the door closed because we don't want the junk and the negativity and any of the, you know, the stuff from the world coming out of our mouth. <laughs> Right? Because what we speak out of our mouth is death or life, blessing or cursing, right? And uh, uh, this example Keith Moore gave in one of his messages, he was talking about, you know, how powerful the Word of God is and how everything that God has said has come to pass. God doesn't just, you know, flap his gums. He doesn't just, oh, I'm just talking. You know, God doesn't just do that. He doesn't just blah, 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 blah. You know, and you sometimes hear people say things like, oh, I laughed till I thought I was going to die, or I worked myself to death, or I, you know, you hear that kind of stuff. And uh, he said, now, what would happen if uh, God said, I just love you to death? He, he, said, <laughs> he says, you would feel really special for about a split second, and then you would die. <laughs> so he, he's like, oh, he loves me. Oh. <laughs> because death and life are in the power of the tongue. It's, it, it controls. Your, our tongue is a rudder of our life. And we have the ability and the, the self-control, so to speak, to steer our life. Amen? And we've got the ability within us, because God is in us, to keep the door closed to the enemy. Because we've been equipped for this. 
this warfare that we're in. We've been equipped to live this life. We've been predestined and preordained to live the good life, but he didn't just say, hey, I'm not giving you any help. Just go on and do what you gotta do and do what you think you could do. No, he's given us answers. He's told us how to live. He said, you know, pretty much we need to just separate ourselves from living like the world. We can we live in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. And we can show the light of Christ to other people. And so that when other people that knew you before and they're like, Wow, you're delivered, you're set free, you're not the same person I used to know, but I still love you too. You know, you want the people that you used to know to still like you now. Yeah. Right? Exactly. We want, you know, we've got to have a good report with godly men and those in the world. Amen? But we've got the equipment. Say, I've got the equipment. I have the ability to live the predestined and preordained life that God wants me to live. I can and I will live the abundant life. And I will have it to the full to the abundance and I will be able to give it out to others that I meet in Jesus name amen glory to God well did you guys get something tonight amen glory to God well if anybody here needs prayer or anything we're available and uh, um, let me let's go ahead let's bow our heads Father, we thank you for all the all of the people that came out tonight, from the youngest to the oldest, Lord. Father, we pray just a special blessing upon each and every person that's in this building in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for safety and sweet sleep for each one of us tonight, Lord. And Father, I pray right now, if there was anybody in here that would say, you know, that um, I've just kind of backed away from, from the Lord a little, a little bit, and I'm just not sure if I'm quite right with him. If you want, raise your hand and we'll pray for you. Amen. Everybody's good then. Glory to God. Well, let's just uh, make this confession. Lord, I endeavor to change anything in my life with your help, Lord, anything that's unpleasing to you and anything that may open the door to the enemy, you will show me and you will help me to overcome it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. And don't forget, we got service on Sunday, Saturday night prayer at 720. And be blessed. Drive home safely. Got the angels of God with you, going before you, behind you, beside you. They're with you. They're on you. They're all over you. Amen. Glory. Amen. Be blessed.